everyone and welcome to this week's vlog by Barton All Burner Services. So as you can tell, it's dark. We are getting into the winter now by the looks of it. It's a bit chillier than normal. It's 7.30 and it's raining. So really frustrating, but it is what it is. I've got a bit behind on a boiler installation today. So I've ended up at this job about an hour and a half behind time. Um, customers fine about it. They've had to go out, um, but they've left the side gate open so I can find my way to where the boiler is. And this week I'm doing uh, something different, a swimming pool boiler. It's a Surskin COH110 boiler and I'm going to give it a full service good old clean and check it and then I'm going to shut it down for the winter and put some winterizer in the pool for them. The reason it's best to do it this time of year is because if you leave the sulfur in the pool boiler all winter what happens is it corrodes away the boiler where it gets damp. So give it a clean, give it a service, set it up, make sure it's okay, shut it down for the winter. And then what they normally do is call me sort of April time and then I just come along, make sure the pressure's back in the boiler, fire her up and just double check it's all okay and away we go again. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So enough of me talking, let's crack on with the vlog, hey? Gone through the side gate, it's a bit dark so I'm a little bit, oh it's not dark, they've left a lot on out here actually, which is good. Oh, another light's come on, brilliant. And uh, well, there's the pool, so here we go. Oh, it even looks like I left a light on inside. Oh, it's undone, brilliant. And there it is, one Certikin boiler. So I'm just gonna go get some tools in. As you can see, it's got the vitamin style flue followed by the insulated flue there that goes through the roof. So that's absolutely fine there. I can see there's a bit of dust there. I think it's, oh, it's coming from there, look. So I just need to reseal that joint. Um, the problem with pool boilers is you have a bit of um, chlorine in the air and it does tend to do stuff in a little bit. Um, so that's gone onto there. What we've got down here, I've got two pipes. These are the flow in and out from the boiler. I can see this one's been changed at some point. So I'll just check these for leaks. And as you see, there's no leaks there. And I'm looking at the back and it looks like it's been, by the looks of it, sealed at some point. Let me have a feel around there. Yeah, there's no leaks around there. So I'll just go and get some tools. If we're wondering why it's got a bit brighter in there, um, when I do jobs and it's dark at night, I tend to use this. I don't even see that. It's like a DeWalt floodlight. It's an amazing bit of gear and it just gives that extra bit of light because it's a bit dark in there. So I can investigate stuff a little bit better. Um, it's a bit cramped in here. Also, we're going to here. I'm just going to check in here. So this is the pool room. So here you've got the pump, obviously just there, which looks fairly new. You've got the filter there. You can see the water's quite clean because it's as clear as a bell in there. Um, this is the multifunction part there. That means you can go to waste, recirculate, stuff like that. Transform from the light. The pipes go through there, they just pop through there. I can see there's no physical leaks. There's a filter inside here as well. You see it's crystal clear. When I've finished, I'm just gonna to go to waste and I'm gonna drain the pool down slightly um, to about halfway before I put the winterizer in as well. And then I can shut the system down and drain it for the year. Uh, I'm not going to go into that too deeply because obviously this is about servicing a boiler, not so much the pool. But yeah, I'll just show you the basics while I'm at it as well. I have my tools. Now, I haven't gone mad. I haven't brought my whole toolbox down here because it's a long way down the garden. So I've just bought the basics. Spanner set, socket set, screwdriver set, rag, tissue, gloves, adjustable, scraper, most important thing, hoover. And uh, yeah, of course the Allen keys. So here we go, one boiler. The first thing we need to do is pop the front off. So we literally get hold of it at the bottom and it should just come off. Voila. I'll just put that out of the way. We're just a bit tight here, so let's bear with me. Okay, so here we go. Now, the first thing is an expansion vessel on here. It was only changed in May 2019. I've noticed the pressure is down as well on here. Now, what you have to watch with Certikin boilers is when the pressure's down, you only need to really pump up to half bar because when they get hot, you've only got the expansion of this and it go up to one to 1.5 bar normally and it runs fine. Because you've got nothing of this, Certikin boilers, they can do heating and stuff like that. In here, this does the pool only. So the expansion is for the boiler only and basically you're doing that, the Bowman unit, okay? And then you've got your normal heat exchanger there, your burner at the bottom, pressure relief valve, and to pressurize this system, it's just on a hose, because you have to do it once a year when you drain it and when you fill it, that's the time you do it. And that's it, it's as simple as that. 
So if people aren't familiar with circuit boilers, obviously you've got the flame like normal, it heats the water up. You've got your circulating pump there, which gets turned on via the sensor up there. Motorized valve, boom, turns it on, fires up the pump, and then it circulates around this, puts the heat through the Bowman unit. And it's very, very intense heat goes through that all the time. And then what happens is the heat is taken out by the flow and the return pipes. And then obviously that slowly heats the pool. In this case, um, normally I think the customer has it about 85 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, that is, which is quite warm. So they're nice and toasty. Okay, so we're not going to go mad. I've, I've got it all turned off at the moment. Okay, I'll start stripping it down. What you may notice is it's a bit corroded. It gets cleaned every time, but it's a bit corroded down there. This is typical of a full boiler okay you've just got in the air the chlorine so you have to be really careful it is a shed as you can clearly see i've still got a sheet down because the sulfur you can get on the floor still and you're protecting yourself because of this chlorine that's in the air so we're just going to pop the top off <clears throat> off it comes and what i see again straight away which you get underneath this the fast vent's gone peffy so it's gone all dusty. So I will hoover that out and I will do that around there. And I will do that around there again. Auto air vents there, not leaking. It is loose and undone, it's not leaking. I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna remove this. And underneath you can see just there, and just there are the two bolts to get the top off the combustion chamber. And then I'll show you inside the boiler. So I've hoovered that off now, and as you can see, it's actually hard underneath. So I don't actually need to do anything. It was just flaking on the top. And actually in here, it's actually solid. So it's actually better than I thought. So actually, I think I will leave that. Okay, so we're just gonna undo the 213s. There's sort of a funny captive nut underneath, so what you can't do is you cannot over tighten them when you put them back again, because one, they can snap really easy. And number two, which is really hard to show here, the lid that's here sort of can bow. That's what happens, so you mustn't over tighten them, because it's just literally a tiny little bit in there. So you have to be really, really careful when you tighten them up. So yeah, I'm just gonna undo them and get the top off. Here we go. I'm going to give it a little wiggle gently because sometimes the rope seal can get stuck. Just give it a wiggle, get a hold of the screw and just lift nice and gentle and out the way we go. And as you can see, it's not massively dirty, but it's dirty enough. So as I explained to you earlier, if I put, the, if I put that sideways, you can see the little tags on the end. If you do them up too tight, they can bend. Okay, so what you can't do, there's one there, look, what you can't do is over tighten it. I'm just going to turn it over. There's your ash board. That's fine. And again, I'm just going to squeeze. That's okay. That's still lovely and soft. Okay, I'd say it wants changing next year, but for now, that's absolutely fine. That's your rope seal. I'm just going to plonk it on the ground. Now we need to make sure it goes back the right way. If you look, there's a gap there in the metal. And that goes on there and on there. Whereas the other side, there is no gap. So you've got to get it the right way around. Oh, it's elite combustion fumes. I'm just gonna put that down. And then as you can see, we can just lift. And it's quite dirty under there. So I'm gonna give it a bit of a clean. See, there's quite a bit of dirt in this here, look. quite a lot, and it's not uncommon for a certain boiler. You've got to think it worked so hard to warm the pool up, so you have to spend a lot of time to clean these properly. As you can see, there's quite a bit there, look. So there's four back on each side of this one, and 
then you've got to think the size, and then you've got to think the box down correctly as well. And don't forget the bit in the middle here, which is a really good space as well. So you don't want to do all that, we'll just speed things up a little bit. As you can see, it's nice and clean. A particular attention to that. As you can see, it's corroding. It hasn't corroded through. They always seem to corrode there on circuits, and it's always a good idea to just keep an eye on it. Now, I've had a really, really good look around it, and I've had a good feel around it, and they're really thick collars on here, so they're unlikely to corrode right through, but occasionally we get a little weak from one but that one's okay. You can see the insulation's fine there. Insulation's fine there. That's been missing a while. I'm not over worried about that because when we done it last time it was missing, obviously we know that is okay. So I'm gonna put the lid back on. But before I do that, I have just checked a while ago, this. Okay, it's got one bar of air pressure in it and it's absolutely fine. Okay, it was only changed a couple of years ago, as you can see. Well, actually, four years ago, so it's done well. Okay, if you ever have to change one of them, they're a nightmare. Okay, I'm glad I haven't got to change it today because they are literally that hard to do. They get corroded and they just get totally stuck. So that is okay. There is no physical leaks in here. This is okay. There is no physical leaks in the top and the bottom of here. And I just check for corrosion in here. Okay, all the way around, check the... The suppleness, that's fine, that's lovely and supple. All the leaves are nice and supple because as I keep saying, I can't reiterate it enough, chlorine in the air, so you have to be really careful. The customer here does keep it in a separate cover, so it's quite good, but sometimes they don't. So, I'm just gonna pop the burner out now after I put the top back on the boiler and we'll go from there. Top back on, and like I said, it's the same on camera A2s and 3s as well. It's works. exactly the same water jacket, basically. When you do it up, I've done it finger tight, I'm going to go like that. That is enough. So let me this side, nice and gentle. That is enough. Okay, lift them up. That is it. That's all you need to do. Okay, that is on there. I can feel it's gone on there properly. It's nipped it. I'm not going to do any more than that with it and it won't leak and it also hasn't bent it so it doesn't bend the middle tighten that up too tight and that like I said before it bends the middle I just want to bring your attention to this that's where my acting fire valve going in just hangs there for some reason there's a filter there okay now there's nothing in that filter bowl because I took it out last year there's actually one on the other side of the wall because it's a silly place to have a filter but they come as part of the boiler but as you can see, the oil line comes out on the side of the boiler. That's not really allowed, but on certain kids, that's how they seem to be. It needs to be really piped with copper from there, through the hole, round and up with an isolation valve here. Don't have to use one, because you do have one here actually. And then a new oil line in. So I will recommend that to the customer. Okay, they'll be pretty good, they'll have it done. So I'm not gonna change this. It is only a few years old anyway. This flexible oil line, and as you can see, when I squeeze it, it's not perished in any way, shape, or form. And as I say, it's about three years old, it's absolutely fine. But I am going to advise they just do that piece of copper work there. Won't take long to do 20 minutes, won't do it today because it's getting late. As normally I would, but I will pop back and do that. This is a real R40 burner. Now, the last boiler I serviced, which was on my vlog, was a Grant boiler and it had an RDB. This, the R40 was out before the RDB, brilliant burner. On this one, you have the control box and transformer all in one. You have the pump there, the solenoid coil there, the motor, there's a capacitor. You can't quite see just under there, there's the end of it, which I'll be checking shortly. And then obviously your fan inside there. It's really important to check everything, especially this fan, because it's in here in this shed, and it's a bit of warmth, stuff like that, susceptible to mice. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull the burner out now. I've already cracked it undone. 13 mil. Drop the nut, I'll find that in a minute. And we're gonna get hold of that. And we're gonna pull it back. Okay, I just need to hoover the rest of that out the bottom there because I couldn't quite reach it earlier without getting my arms filthy dirty. Okay, I'm gonna pull this burner back here and look. 
And look at that, a year of running, it's still really, really good, that nozzle. But as always, we will change it anyway. So I'll go through the burner process of how to strip and do that, just after I've cleaned the inside, bottom part of the boiler again. I've moved it out inside there. Mm, you can sort of see it, there it is, okay. So, I've wiped the bottom of the boiler quickly. It's stained, you're not gonna do anything about that. But I do look, underneath, can't see a lot there, look, a bit corroded. The reason I look underneath, is for like mice, mouse, nests, stuff like that. Sometimes find droppings in the bottom of the boiler. And yeah, they do an outside version of this as well. Well, this is in all outside. And obviously I find mice everywhere, mouse droppings, nests, stuff like that. So I always have a really, really good look. But in this case, there isn't any. That's really good news. Um, if you get a mouse going, the air intake suits the boiler off. It's a nightmare. So yeah, I'm really happy. This is sound good inside, no leaks, just a burner to do. Um, I've just popped to the tank, uh, no point in me videoing that. It's raining outside, it's a bit in a bush, it's not to regulation. I would advise the customer with that, with a CD 14 form. Um, I've done the filter outside, done the one on the other side of the building, job done. Okay, so we're just down to the burner. It's getting on towards nine o'clock now. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna crack on a little bit now. I mentioned you earlier, I've isolated the boiler. The plug goes up there, out it comes, so it's all isolated. Okay, end cheek. So on the RDB, which I've done before, you have to take like um, an end cheek off followed by another bit. On this one, it's just a three screws. So I had someone recording me last time, but this time I'm doing this by myself. So there's one, two, And three. We're going to just pop them out. Okay, and we're going to lift this off. And we're going to turn it over. The first thing we noticed is this is clean, just corroded. Now, what we do at Barton All Burner Services that we've done before, and it's my dad's done it, my boys do it, and me. As a joke, we write in the lids to each other. So this one is, it was rebuilt this burner. The 10th of the 5th, 2019, by granddad. That's my dad, the boy's granddad, with a smiley face. It makes us smile. It's very warm when we read this about each other. And it's excellent, and we write it on a lot. So yeah, this burner's actually been rebuilt four years ago by my dad. So it ought to be all right, really, hadn't it? There we go. So that bit's clean. Just corrosion, look, doesn't come off. So that's fine. I'll plonk that down and there we go behind here so we've just got a little bit of dirt in there okay this is as clean as clean really it's just from the chlorine that's all it is and then we've got the fan and as you can see the fan has got no dirt in it whatsoever it's nice and clean i'm still going to get a brush to it and i'm going to go through all these one at a time give them a little scrape and a little clean and a hoover and then i can put it together again then we know it's fine the good news is, like I was saying earlier, we get mice that get caught in these here sometimes. Okay, as you can see, there's nothing. Just needs cleaning, and I'll put it back together again. So I'm putting it back together. When you put these screws in, you've got to think, it's a steel screw, stainless steel screw, into an aluminium body. Do not over-tighten them. If you do, you never get them out again. So we just very gently, Nip. Get the screwdriver on it. Again. Nip. And the final one. Nip. And then we just give them all a tiny little tighten. That is it. On this burner end cheek, this is your air adjustment. So you reduce the air to give it more CO2. You give it more air to give it less CO2. You undo that small nut there. That you undo very slightly and that just slides round. But don't forget when you're done and you set your CO2 and mixtures up to do them up again. Otherwise they vibrate round. And I've done it and so have my boys and probably my dad. And what it ends up doing is sooting up because it's just worked its way around. 
So that's a good tip, that. Remember when you've set it up to nip them up. Otherwise, you're just going to have a nightmare on your hands and it'd be quite embarrassing. Control box. Little grub screw. Undo it two or three turns. Then I'll put my screwdriver just here and pop and lift it off. Pull it back and lift. Okay, pull it back and lift. There's your reset button. When we turn it over, that tiny little white lump there is your light photocell. That detects the flame. Obviously, if it's got a failure, it will go wrong. And when these go wrong, the burner just basically runs and runs and runs and runs and runs and runs and doesn't fire. That's when you know they've failed. In the end here, you don't have HT leads on this one. You have this. The electrodes go straight into there. So there's no physical leads. It just goes straight into there. This one's absolutely fine, this box. Okay, it's just a bit of dirt there. I'll give that a wipe out there. And that's it. But I'll just put that to one side. Here is the wiring. I'll check it again. All nice and loose and what I mean by loose is there's no tight cables okay when I've done that I'll then go and check these and nip these up individually but however I do need to check the capacitor so when you check the capacitor you can't do it with the leads in you need to take them out for the capacitor so I'm just going to undo them now like so so we've got one here loosen that we've got one here loosen that and slowly pull one out. And pull two out. And we just need to check it with the meter. As you can see, I've only got 2.664. This is a four UF capacitor. So it's just getting a little bit down on power. Okay, not a very good light there, but there it is there, look. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to take any chances because these boilers work so hard. When it comes to starting it up on a cold day, i.e. the spring when they want to fire it up again, it's not going to go very well. It's just a little bit underpowered. Uh, 1.4 ohms down or uh, UF microfarads down even. So I'm just going to go get another one off the van and we'll be fitting a new one. Okay, so to change it, basically, there's your capacitor. We pull the leads out. So I've just disconnected them. One number two and we unscrew them and they literally just nip undone you've got to have the leads up and then you just turn and you keep turning and then it comes out there's the hole where it goes now this capacitor itself as you can see it's upside down there is a four uf capacitor okay this capacitor's done really, really well because if we turn it over like we write on everything, fitted the 26th of the 4th, 2013. So at the time of the refurb, it would have been fine. But obviously now, with 10 years it's lasted, so it's going in the bin. Okay, the new capacitor's on. As you can see, it's metal. I have tested it. It's now 4 UF, so it works fine. I'll put it back in again. And what I do is, if I put it back together properly, one, two three four five six seven i nip them up i make sure they're all tight when that's done i've cleaned the box in the magic eye the photo cell and then get hold of it and i push click it's back on again okay and then we just get this grub screw again don't over tighten it's plastic and nip. done doesn't come off so we're onto the pump now one pump so we're just going to undo the up for the cool stem i've now got my tray i had it here earlier i normally do the burner in the tray but it's quite confined here i've now put the tray down because in case of spill any oil so obviously it's contained in the tray that i'm using okay we're going to take the collar off there and we're going to take the coil off now it's really important you've got to check the coil for cracks and stuff like that this one is not cracked it's absolutely fine lay that to one side and now we're going to undo the three Allen, one, two, and one round the back. We're gonna undo them three Allen keys. Okay, so here we go. One. Two. And hopefully, oh, straight away. Three. Okay, 
pump's now loose. We've got a 12 mil on the back, which is for the nozzle line. We crack it undone. Again, these don't have to be clunched up. Okay, it's just literally brass into metal, so don't do it. Move the nozzle line out of the way. And voila, turn it over. As you can see, there's no leaks there at all. Okay, now when I undone that nozzle line, it introduces air to this end so you can get a dribble coming out the nozzle. Okay, so that's why I've put it in a tray. I look in here, we can see there's no oil in there. And what I will now do is I will get my screwdriver. I will inspect here and I'll inspect here just to make sure that there's no lumps out the back of the motor. I will pull the drive coupling off here and I will check it. And what I look for is to see if there's a wear mark which covers the line, like the bottom half of that, just there, that coupling, and there's not. That one's actually perfect, but it's discolored. Okay, because it's discolored, I'm gonna chuck it. And if by magic, that's much better, isn't it? So I'm gonna put that on. But before I do that, I'm just gonna get hold of this here and I'm gonna spin it. It's quiet as a mouse. Okay, if it wasn't, I would change the bearings. So I'm gonna get the pump here. I'm gonna turn it round. I'm gonna look at the direction, which is, as you look at it, it's going left. So we turn the pump over and we turn right, because it's the other way around. Look at the shaft. It's a green bio shaft, so it's fine. All the seals bio, it's fine. And I'm gonna turn it. And I'm gonna turn this approximately 52 times. Might be 54, but for one turn of this shaft, it does a lot of revolutions of the cogs inside. So we keep turning it because it's very fine knit cogs in there. And the idea is we turn it and turn it. And if there's any high spots at all, i.e. it goes tight, then obviously we chuck it away. For the pure reason, it could stop at that point and then very clearly the boiler wouldn't run. So I'm gonna do that a few more times, just in a second, and I will check that and make sure it's okay. So the customer's just come home and actually said there was intermittent lockouts on it, which she didn't tell me originally, which is great. So that will be that capacitor that I explained to you. And the most important thing is I've been given coffee. I love coffee, love it. I'm so pleased about that. So I'm gonna turn this shaft about another 30 times and I'm gonna put it back together and then we can go from there. Pump's back on. Just wanna bring your attention to the nut on the top for the coil, okay? Do not over tighten it. If you over tighten it, let me take it off again. What it does, it pulls on this shaft. And if you look, there's a seal just under there. Okay, and that seal will then start to leak. And it's a really common fault. Over tighten it, it leaks. So you put it on, click it in place. You then put the next bit on. And then you do it up. You can't leave it loose because it will rattle and vibrate. But as you do it up, as it goes tight, ding, that is it. No more. If you do it anymore, you'll get a leak on an older pump. And you don't want to be doing that. So let's have a quick recap. We know that the fan is okay, it's clean, no mice, no anything at all. Capacitor was down on power, we've changed it. Control box was okay, and also I've tightened all the nuts inside where the wires were. We've turned the pump 52, 54 times, the correct direction, no high spots. We've done the coil, we've checked the flex below line, we've checked the motor, the back of the motor is fine. We've cleaned inside through the top, we've cleaned through the bottom, we've cleaned the bottom, we've checked for things like mice nests, leaks, stuff like that, none. All line checked, no leaks, just down to the nozzle now. Just gonna bring your attention to this, PTFE. I've just moved it. There is a rubber o-ring under here, but because it's a certain boiler and the corrosion we get, we put some extra PTFE around there. It's not bodgy like people think, it's so it fits in snug and tight to stop any gases escaping by, and that's why we do it. So I'm gonna take this blast tube off now, I'm gonna clean around here, and I'm gonna clean all in here, and then I'm gonna get back to you. Blast tube off and clean. So here we have the electrodes and the nozzle. So we're just gonna undo the electrodes now. Again, we just nip it undone. 
and we lift them off like so out the way. But we are first going to inspect them. These are plastic ones. They're not split. The ends are still sharp and they're exactly like they should be. So we're happy with them. And there is the nozzle, quite clean. And there's the nozzle holder. So what we do, like I said in my previous video, is I always get a bit of emery. Clean. Look at that, voila, clean around there first. Okay, we then look down here and you can see, if I get my screwdriver, as I said earlier, there's no leads. There's the bits on the control box down there. Okay, and just there lurking as well. Ooh, I don't know if you can quite see it there, just down there where my screwdriver is, is the light cell that detects the flame. So I'm just gonna change the nozzle, crack the nozzle under, put it under it. And I'm going to look, you can see it's a little bit dirty beyond there. There was a bit of dirt in the filter, nothing much. And then I'm going to wipe it. Now, I've just wiped that onto my hand. As you can see there, it doesn't look filthy dirty. And it doesn't look like there's water in there either. That's how I check. So that's fine. So we're going to stick a new one in. We're going to put the blast tube back on. We're then going to renew this. Once we've set the electrodes up, and when we push these electrodes back in here like so, Okay, like that, that part will sit just a slightly proud of the front of the nozzle. Okay, so it's an exact set gap, which I will set. I'm not gonna go into too much detail. Like I've said to people in previous videos, this isn't for people to do it DIY. This is to give you an overview. There is also other bits I'm doing, but I'm just not gonna show you them. This is the basics of what you do on a, if it's on a cert skin. So I'm just gonna do these bits, plonk the burner back in, and I'll be back. Right, so there we have it. We're all back together. So, quick recap. Good clean, make sure there's no mice. Checked everything, changed the capacitor. Checked the pump was okay, changed the drive coupling. Okay, went through, changed the nozzle, everything's fine. I'm gonna advise the customer about the tank location, etc. I'm gonna advise the customer about having the flexible oil line not outside a boiler. It should be a um, copper line that goes in. Um, far valve I have tested as well like I said in you know I don't show everything but it is a vlog about how to test the far valve so <clears throat> if you want to have a look at that have a look um, what I would normally do now is pump pressure the 11060 EH nozzle 110 um, PSI and then I'll set it up to 11 to 11.5 percent CO2 in my machine I'd love to show you but unfortunately as soon as I fire this beast up all the pumps come on for the swimming pool, um, which is very, very noisy in here um, for the circulation of the pool water, as well as the burner. So unfortunately, I will run it, but I can't explain anything to you. Um, the good news is the customers told me, actually, the pool man's coming tomorrow to winterize the pool. She didn't realize that I was gonna do it for her, so that's fine. So like I explained earlier, he'll put the waste um, pipe out, which is the other side of the wall. He will empty it to approximately half the amount of water in the pool to what there normally is and then we put a winterizer in it um, which is like um, stops it from going green etc etc once he's done that he will drain the boiler okay it's just the boiler only the jacket and that will be it for the winter shut the power down and then he'll put the winter cover over the top of the pool so i'll just show you it running and uh yeah we are there so it's gone all right it's quarter to ten Taking a bit longer than what I wanted to, um, probably because I'm trying to record it as I go along as well. Hope it's been detailed enough for you as well, because clearly there's no one videoing me. I'm having to do it while one-handed while I'm trying to do the boiler. So uh, yeah, let's get a fired up. Okay, so I've done my pump pressure and I've done my CO2. It was miles out, it was 10.1. Um, so some dice discrepancy in nozzles and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I got it to where I wanted to in the end. CO was really low, it's only about three or four, so it's really good. But I just want to bring your attention to this. Okay, this is where you turn it on. This is for the heating side, but this boiler has got no heating attached to it. So we just turn it. And as you can see, if we just wait a second while it flashes, the temperature is 68 degrees at the moment of the pool water because I haven't been using it. So we'll turn it up just to go just above. The valve will open now. Okay, it's normally about 85. And if we wait a second, there we go. And we'll just wait for it to fire. And then obviously you know what's going on. There we go, lovely and quiet. 
So on this model, um, yeah, it's very, very powerful. You can see just there, it's very on big, huge plane. And so it's absolutely lovely, exactly like the one it to be. Okay, so that is it. I'm just going to clear up, put the casing on. Let's turn that off. Because it's noisy. Put the casing on, have a really good clear up, tidy up, and then uh, speak to the customer about the things that need doing. And uh, yeah, jump back into my van. That's it everyone, that is the COH110 Certikin oil fired boiler, serviced, winterized and ready for next year. So like I explained earlier, um, the pool guy's coming tomorrow just to winterize the other side of the pool, which we quite often do for the customer, but this time I think the pool man's doing it. And uh, yeah, we'll get to the spring. I have spoke to the customer. I'll do that small piece of oil line work for them um, when we refire the boiler. The oil is also now turned off to the boiler, so clearly there's no chance of spillage, leakage, anything like that, um, if it was to corrode through the line, which it's very unlikely to anyway. Uh, we do obviously do school pool boilers as well quite often uh, with them they're slightly different we do give them a clean and do exactly the same as what I've just shown you however quite often they're in really damp sheds um, right in the back of the school by the um, pool itself so we actually take them burners off and take them away um, because they're bigger and then what happens is the natural draft goes through the boiler up out the chimney and then it just creates a nice airflow through it because we find that if we leave the burners in over the winter we can't get them out they just corrode in because of all the chlorine and that and as much as we tell people at schools to keep the chlorine away unfortunately they don't so anyway really happy customer i'm really happy a bit later just after 10 o'clock at night um not gonna really have much to eat when i get home so uh i might just grab a chinese anyway until next time everybody have a really good rest of your weekend stay safe